tonight on Connecticut's news station after their child was killed by a dangerous drug. Parents are launching a lawsuit against a public school district. Why they believe staff is culpable. A witness describes a horrifying scene on Route 1 in Orange, a woman killed in a hit and run. We're also learning that victim was related to another victim in a tragic death this year. That's more tonight. A new direct flight is connecting the southern coast of our state to Puerto Rico. And Fox 61 was on the plane for its inaugural trip. We'll tell you why it's so important to so many people. Now at 10, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. We begin tonight in the capital city where the family of a teen who died from a fentanyl overdose last year is now suing Hartford Public Schools. Thanks for joining us here at 10. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. The parents of Ethan Hernandez Reyes say the district's partially responsible for the death of their son. They claim staff at the Sport and Medical Sciences Academy were careless. Fox 61's Jake Garcia combed through the lawsuit and joins us now in studio with the details. Jake? Well, Brent and Sarah, you may remember this. It was January 13th of last year when 13-year-old Ethan Hernandez Reyes was attending gym class when he became unresponsive due to fentanyl poisoning. Two days later, he was dead. This was the scene last January at the Sport and Medical Sciences Academy in Hartford after 13-year-old Ethan Hernandez Reyes was found unresponsive in gym class. According to a new lawsuit, Reyes was feeling unwell. He was told he could sit out of the class and rejoin if he felt better, or if he felt worse, he could go to the nurse. The lawsuit also states that nearly an hour later, the gym teacher went to check on Hernandez Reyes, who was lying on the gym mat and found him unresponsive. The teacher then alerted a nurse who performed CPR until paramedics arrived. The lawsuit claims that if the district had a Narcan policy and trained staff, he could have been helped sooner, which they say could have saved his life. After the incident at SMSA, Hartford Public Schools began carrying Narcan and training their employees on the signs of an overdose and how to administer Narcan. Hartford Public Schools releasing this statement regarding the lawsuit, saying in part, the safety and well-being of our students and staff is our top priority. Due to the pending litigation, we will not issue further comment. This is nasal uh, naloxone, and this can be administered in someone's uh, nose. They don't have to be breathing the membranes will absorb it, and this can save someone's life safer than aspirin, safer than Tylenol. You can actually buy it over the counter. You can get it at harm reduction organizations across Connecticut who will provide you with some training. Dr. Craig Allen says it's important to know all the signs of a potential opiate overdose. Slowed breathing, they might have a blueness around their lips. Um, they uh, will have pinpoint very small pupils, they might be falling asleep or, or unconscious, very difficult to wake up, and that can progress to someone not breathing at all. Dr. Allen says most teens do not seek out fentanyl but encounter it while experimenting with other types of drugs. That's why education is key. It is important to educate the parents, educate the teachers and the coaches and the administrators and to educate the kids. Now, the parents of Ethan Hernandez Reyes are suing the city and the Board of Education for at least $15,000. Dr. Allen says if you have to administer Narcan or Naloxone to someone, it's important to call 911 because additional medical treatment may be needed. In studio, Jake Garcia, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Jake, uh, either way that uh, comes out, that's a tragic story Sad. for that family. Yeah. Uh, all right, time now for a first check on the forecast. And, you know, we actually have a few more days uh, that will get up above 60 mm. left this year but uh, it's chilly when the sun sets. It sure is, yeah. And you know, it's, it isn't too bad, right? In, during the day, as Brent was saying, here's Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank with what we can expect tomorrow. Hi, Rachel. What they're not saying is me mm. walking around in my Uggs and my winter coat just before getting on the air is quite a sight. Uh, 45 degrees right now in Hartford. Yeah, I've, I've broken all that stuff out, even though it's not so bad out there. 40 degrees in Meriden and low to mid 50s for the Connecticut shoreline. Heading through the evening tonight, it actually won't be as cold as it was last night into this morning when temperatures were pretty widespread in the 20s. Tonight, we're looking at overnight lows in the 30s for most of the state, and some along the shoreline may only drop back towards the 40 degree mark. So, already that 
warming trend begins and we're going to really notice it tomorrow with high temperatures pushing 60 degrees as we head into the afternoon. And not only is it warm, but look at this. We got nothing but sunshine to deal with. It will also be quite warm heading into Friday too, but we will see increasing clouds and a close call with some rain heading into the weekend. We're going to talk more about that plus the potential for what could be a soaking rain as we head towards this time next week. Your full forecast coming up. All right, Rachel, thank you. A former Glastonbury police officer facing even more burglary charges tonight. Patrick Hemingway was arrested in court today where he appeared in connection to computer crimes charges. Police say he broke into the old Weathersfield country store back in February, stealing the cash register drawer. And then in May, allegedly did the same thing at Old Saybrook's Pizza Palace. Hemingway was previously arrested for his alleged involvement in dozens of other burglaries that extended into Rhode Island and Massachusetts and for accessing the state's criminal database illegally. He'll appear in court again Friday on the updated charges. And the man charged in a fatal Norwich shooting has been extradited back to Connecticut from Miami, Florida. Police say Stankovic Fabre shot and killed Kamari Clack back in May of this year. He was arrested earlier this month in Florida and will appear in court next month in New London. Fabre is being held on a $3 million bond. New details out of Orange tonight. Police say they're searching for a driver accused of a deadly hit and run. The victim is identified as 43-year-old Kershida Mohammadi. She was killed while crossing the street. Fox 61's DeAndrea Turner has more on the story from the perspective of a witness. The hit and run happened on this road, and I spoke with an eyewitness who said that the victim was standing in the middle of the road when everything happened. When people were just going around her like she was not human. I mean, it was a really sad and just horrific scene, honestly. Shantavia Chapel was one of the only eyewitnesses of a fatal hit and run that left 43 year old Krishida Mohammadi dead. Police say that she was struck by two cars Tuesday night on Boston Post Road in Orange. The first car fled the scene while the second driver stopped and is cooperating with police. They literally left her there like she was an animal. Then another car came like about maybe like 10 seconds later and hit her again. I mean, if I wish I could turn back the hands of time, I would have like, you know, maybe even yelled at my window like, you know, hey, like, you know, you need to move to a safer area. You know, that area is not safe. I think she thought that she was safe because she was in the middle. She's like, like in a little bubble. While there is a crosswalk near where the incident took place, other residents attest to Boston Post Road not being the safest for pedestrians. In April, a pedestrian was struck and killed on the same stretch in Milford. It's not conducive to, to safety and health for uh, the citizens. Citizens like Krushita. I know she, she has family. I'm pretty sure she may be a mother or, you know, pretty sure she might be a sister, you know, and I would never want anything like this to happen to any of my family members. And that's why, you know, I just hope that, you know, they find a driver. She is an aunt and sister. In fact, one of her only relatives in the U.S. was her niece, Royal Muhammadi, who was found dead in the West Haven River just one day after her colleagues reported her missing in March. While their friends in West Haven are calling for a deeper investigation into Roya's death, Krishida's death now compounds their family in Afghanistan's tragedies as they deal with two unanswered deaths. I just feel so bad, you know, I just wish that things were different. Now this is an ongoing investigation. Police are still looking for the person in the first car who left the scene. If you have any information, you are encouraged to reach out to Orange Police Department. In Orange, DeAndrea Turner, Fox 61, Connecticut's News Station. All right, DeAndrea, we have an official date now for a second primary in Bridgeport. The do-over will take place on January 23rd, followed by a general election on February 27th if candidate John Gomes comes out on top. This will only be for the mayoral race and Democratic candidates. As we've covered extensively here on Connecticut's news station, a judge ordered a new primary after evidence of ballot fraud in the first primary. Mayor Joe Gannon beat Gomes by just under 200 votes in that first primary. Well, tonight in your Fox 61 Business Report, it's a historic day for the folks in southern Connecticut who for the first time are flying from Tweed New Haven Airport to San Juan, Puerto Rico. Fox 61's New Haven County Bureau reporter Julia LeBlanc jumped on that inaugural flight. Ready, one, two, three, let her rip. 
electric excitement from a Velo Flyers taking off from Tweed New Haven Airport to San Juan for the first time Wednesday morning. <laughs> marking only the start of celebrations. Welcome to San Juan, Puerto Rico. With more waiting on the island. <laughs> Among the crowd is a dancing Rosario Ruiz, taking her son back to the place he was born. Wanted to show him where he grew up, over there and the school he go to, and meet his grandma because he don't remember too much about it. The Ruiz family moved to Bridgeport when Victor was six years old. Now with Avello choosing Puerto Rico as its 18th destination to fly out of Tweed, it's more convenient for them to see people they've gone decades without visiting. Really? I don't remember ever being in Puerto Rico. <laughs> I'm just excited to see a beach and my grandma again. Jose Lopez of Hamden is also going to see family for the first time in four years. I'm going to visit my father now. He's 95 and I figured it's, let me go now before anything happens. Lopez flies here as often as he can, drawn to the island his ancestors came from. Oh my God, the food, the weather, the ambience, you know, it's really nice. The occasion, a long time coming, with the greater New Haven community begging for an easier connection to the island. It's a growing community, 25,000 strong in the New Haven area, roughly 90,000 within the New Haven, Milford Metro area. People who will likely visit Puerto Rico and welcome visitors back to our state. This is an opportunity, right, to connect, expand tourism to the island and also to New Haven and Connecticut. Just the beginning of a new partnership celebrating their roots and planting new ones. Definitely. If anything allows me, God bless. I hope I can come back next year. Yeah, I love that Puerto Rico. Now from here on out, Avello will be flying to and from Puerto Rico on Wednesdays and Saturdays just to start off. We're here in Puerto Rico, Julia LeBlanc, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Julia, thank you. Uh, we have much more coming up here on the News at 10. With a hate crime investigation underway at a state university, students are speaking out. We'll hear from some of them after racist and anti-Semitic graffiti was found in a residence hall. With over 200 people still held hostage by Hamas, reports are suggesting a deal might be in the works to get them home. I'll tell you more about that and the ramped up attacks against Israel tonight. Later, it was all smiles and handshakes when President Biden welcomed China's leader to the U.S. today. What, if anything, did they accomplish? We'll have that story coming up.